Hello and welcome to the circus. Um, this is Franz Cantor, a cartoonist, illustrator, tune talker, a trapeze artist, clown, you name it. I'm here at the Australian Cartoon Museum and my guest speaker here is... Guest speaker. Uh, it's Jim Bridges. My co-conspirator, Jim Bridges, yeah, and you and are the... I'm not the caricaturist, but he is. So um, stand by, he's about to do a caricature of... Oh. Julian Assange. Julian so, Assange. Yeah. This is, uh, let's see if we can get him. Julian Assange, of course. We'll just do a, a quick little wiki explanation of who he is. I've done a little thumbnail sketch here of Julian. We'll talk about the construction methods and everything. I've kind of transposed that up into a larger sketch. He's got a round, blocky head. Well, we'll talk about that in a second, but mm. Julian Assange is an Australian editor, publisher and activist who founded WikiLeaks in 2006. Uh, in 2010, he came to international attention uh, when he published a series of leaks provided by U.S. Army intelligence analyst Chelsea Manning. So Chelsea Manning, I think, transitioned um, to born a male, and she's uh, transitioned. So there's a lot of um, uh, intrigue involved in all of this. Apart mm. from uh, anything else, the, the emails were incredibly uh, frank and honest and full of you know, international intrigue, international uh, grudges against people, you know, like, I don't like this person, this person's a jerk, and things like that. But, you know, I don't know how or why they thought that email would be uh, an appropriate uh, area to vent your uh, private musings. Usually, you know, especially politics, it would never happen in J. Edgar Hoover's time. They no, would just kept no. it around the... Because J. Edgar because Hoover he, was a he, famous cross-dresser, it, they kept all that information at the water cooler. No, but he had more files on everybody else, so no one would dare to uh, say anything because he had more, f he had more dirt on anybody. But w was he willing to use it though? Of course he was, and okay. he did. I didn't know that. Okay. Oh yeah, they're all frightened of him. Mm. If he's not using the dirt, why would they be frightened of him? We must draw J. Edgar Hoover. He's got a very interesting face. We can discern quite a lot from him. Um, this is Julian, <laughs> Julian Assange's uh, visage. Visage. At the moment. Oh. He came out of um, his Looks confinement. Looks like he came out of a western mm. in that shot. Well, it's a, yeah, it's a beautiful publicity shot, isn't it? It's kind of, it looks very intense, you know, very implacable. There's not a lot of uh, creases and wrinkles and things going on in mm. his face there. He looks very calm and composed like a robot. It's like a zero. <laughs> like a, like a zero. It's like a... You know what? He, he reminds You're... me of a zero uh, pilot going in for the kill, you know, not, not stopping for anything. Your, um, irresolute. your adjectives are getting very pointed. Yeah, this is him sort of, again, you know, tired and Less weary. pointed, less pointed. Yeah. yeah, so he has, we're going to work from this photograph here. So he has a beard, obviously. You know, he, he's, he, he's, people that grow beards either do so for two reasons. One is, apart from being hipster, of course, that's really cool. It's really, you know, cool, man. It's like the old beatniks in the 50s. But uh, people who grow beards have got two complexes. One, they're trying to be Santa Claus. Or well, the second one, they're trying to be Moses. And I suspect that this is the latter for Julian Assange. What he wants to be Moses. Yes. The lawgiver. The lawgiver. Well, well, Moses, apart from the lawgiver, that's a Jewish term. You forgot. But you, he's more of the leader of men. You forgot the third reason. What's the third reason? Laziness. No. That's the main reason blokes don't shave, mate. No, I don't think so. This is a this is a. Have you ever grown beard. a beard? I have. But this is a groomed beard, so it's not really oh, it's laziness. a groomed beard. Oh. You know, um, this is not something where you... A soup Already strainers. half the people have switched off. Because they oh, don't like beards. No, your comments on beards. Well, I'm not talking about soup strainers, the ones that you see on homeless people. I'm talking, you know, with bits of food left over from their last argument that they've had with someone. I'm talking about these sort of groomed... Um, Hirsute uh, um, um, tales, these Hirsute stories. The Hirsute pursuit. Yeah. <laughs> these are stories written in fur. Look, just get on with the drawing. and It's a big thing for a man to beards, grow a beard. Beards are great for drawing because you can play with the hair, all right? Well, the hair, pencil and hair, as we've discovered before, is a very um, 
symbiotic uh, yeah, relationship. But don't put in too much colour because it all looks like a wig. What? The wig? Yeah, well, the you drew, who'd you draw? You drew Va Vaughan Bode and you coloured in his hair a bit too deep and it looked like a wig. Not a hippie. It's not a very good um, reference. Not that I'm criticising. Not that I'm criticising. Heaven forbid. Yeah, well, he started wiki uh, leaks, which is a bloody good idea. I mean, every every man and their dog wants um, a leak. Um, <laughs> they, they, you know, they want transparency in in, in, in business government. and in government and in relationships and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, but usually government don't want transparency. Yeah, they call for transparency when, yeah. on their way in, on and their way out. They, there's a last thing yeah. in the world they want. Yeah. The, Freedom of information is yeah, because they, they'll is on be, their dartboard, you know? Well, yeah, but most of the time they'll be caught with their hands in the till. But you see, he, he published stuff that no one else would touch. Mm. Well, no one had the access. He had well, the access. Well, th that's the technical uh, environment he finds himself in. Mm. So in the age of the hacker, you've got the, um, the ability of people to actually look at what you're saying in... in um, emails so it's not just a case of like um, you know treason or something or embarrassing the American government the American government are stupid if they think that emails will protect them from um, scrutiny because everybody knows that the digital our digital footprints are footprints they leave traces sooner or later all emails come out. So all of the secrets, you know, that's why I don't believe in Area 51, because if Area 51 happened, it would be of such important uh, consequences to mankind. You would never be able to, to keep that under wraps, never. Oh, so part of no your, possible way. Part of you, the little shreds left of believing in UFOs. It doesn't, it doesn't one doesn't uh, uh, rule out the other. I, I you um, know, UFOs might exist, but Area 51 doesn't. France had a... An, um, it can't. France had a column in a paper when he was in his teens, and he wrote about UFOs. It wasn't a column, it was a comic. It was a fantasy yeah. comic. It wasn't yeah, a, but he, anything I mean, realistic. How old were you, 15? Yeah, 14. Yeah. For Simon Townsend's um, newspaper. Oh, he, that's right, he did Zoot. a comic. He did a comic. No, he yeah. did a newspaper. Kids yeah, but he newspaper. also did a comic, Simon Townsend. That was, for, that was comic. different. That was Peter Ledger's uh, comic in um, Woman's Weekly or Woman's Day. Mm. No, but they did a full comic. Yeah, not a full comic. Yeah, I, I've got it at home. It wasn't a comic. It was a, a, a like a page or half a page in Women's Day. And that was Simon Townsend's Yeah, Wonder but Wars. I'm talking about they actually published a comic. Of what? Of, 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 of that. It might have been uh, reprints. I don't know. Yeah. I probably would. I wouldn't mind seeing that. I'm looking forward to what you do with his hair, although it's white. Mm. That's mm. all right. I got a white pen. Yeah. So um, Julian has sort of like uh, painted himself as a victim, and in many ways, I think he's you know that that's just, it's perfectly justified. I think he's sort of. Um, he is, he is on the watch list, and they're trying to um, extradite him from, from prison, which he's serving for skipping bail on um, a matter that was to do with extradition, which I think the Swedish government have um, dropped those charges. Well, but the English charge. He, he, was of, up, he was up for rape in Sweden, wasn't he? Isn't that the. the what it's all about, and um, that's not what this is about. This is about no, something but I mean, else. Uh, have those uh, now have they been held. dropped? Have they been dropped? The the, yeah, but while he was uh, out on bail, he absconded and went to the Ecuadorian embassy. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and that's why he's in jail. Yeah, um, because it's, finally they ran out of. Um, well, I think it's kind of excuses in the end yeah. to to lock him up, but to I mean, wait for some kind of a extradition to happen you know and this is like an unfortunate um, series of events in the um, 
Yeah, but I mean, for instance, um, you know, all my lifetime, if you met some young person and, and um, you asked them what they wanted to do and they mm. said they're going to be a journalist, oh, good on you, you know. And now um, it's... He didn't put journalism no, no, into no, disrepute. No, but... They did that themselves. No, but journalism is actually going down the gurgle for all sorts of reasons, not just because of... of the, um, no one reads them. No, but it's also because um, uh, th- th- there's less around. There's, th- there's less jobs. There's less papers. There's less magazines. There's less columns. Mm. And, um, and also... Um, in the old days, in war, war um, zones and stuff like that, mm. um, you know, um, they, they, I mean, n- n- now it's total war. You, you, you kill the reporters, you kill the, the journalists, you know, even though you've got press written on your chest, you know. Um, you take them prisoners because you don't want them to say things about what you're doing, so you shut them down. It's, well, the um, communists used to do that in South America. They kidnap journalists... Yeah, and then get them to interview them, and and you know, lo and behold, um, uh, Che Guevara be on the cover of Time magazine, Man of the Year. So, yeah, but but hang on, uh, I'm just saying that the the in, in in a time when all these things are shutting down, all these you know, I mean, um, mm. uh, uh, all these news agencies are shutting down, you know, and there's mm. less and less places, so more and more people are going online, mm. trying to find their own sources of. You know, um, and this is where the and um, and then WikiLeaks comes along, and mm. of course, they they drop really big news, really big stuff that no one else is going to touch or no one else is prepared to touch. Mm. And um, so, I mean, we are entering a a pretty fascist time. You know, if you study history, we're definitely well, it's heading the death down row, that. It's the death rows of of um, the empires, isn't it? The last kick, the last gasp of the empires. Well, I'm to talking about democracy. So I'm not talking about. Um, yeah, but democracy is part of democracy is transparency. Yeah. So WikiLeaks provides transparency, whether you like it or not. You know that is tra- that's what. Yeah. Democracy is supposed to, democracy so, is supposed to do. So he ha- I mean, he's caused um, the, the the American by government tr- a lot of uh, trouble. Yeah, by being they, transparent. That's right. So they want him. And if they get him, he'll never get out of jail. So I well, think it's I think it's pretty important that everybody gets behind the mm. the, um, the the the, the program to actually get him released, mm. and not just because he's Australian, you know, and looks like some um, cowboy. Well, it's partly because he's Australian, isn't it? It's not like a. I mean, we don't like our citizens well, locked up. Well, look at like look at um, the Panama um, uh, Papers, you know. The Panama Papers. Well, yeah, from, all, from all the eighteen. No, 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 80s. no, no, no. It happened last year, or about eighteen months ago. When when all those papers of all the dealings, mm. tax dealings, and um, of of all the rich all around the world were published mm. on Wikipedia. You know what I mean? Mm. There's just thousands. And so people actually got to... They saw stuff... That they didn't like. That they didn't... That they, they sort of guessed, but this was proof. You know what I mean? So it's all important well, stuff. Well, you know, yeah, the middle class thousands thousands get to see how crooked thousands of people implicated, they're... like the thousands and thousands of people with their money in the seashells, island, not paying tax, mm. um, companies, all that stuff. Well, that's an invaluable... Uh, um... That's but, an invaluable But you see, thing. They, you know, it, it's the old idea. If, if, if you shoot the leader... Mm. Um, who, who replaces the leader? Well, you, you win the war, you know what I mean? <laughs> Which is <laughs> a pretty good reason time. why when you're having a battle, the leader's but still on the it, hill at the back, you know? Yeah, but isn't it like, no matter who you pick, they're all going to be corrupted because that's what power does. And human nature is the fact that... Uh, you know, power um, corrupts absolutely, absolute power. Well, a lot of hackers actually probably thinking they're doing a great job because they're... they're well, yeah, they're, they are in a way. I can't see... I can't see a problem for transparency. Well, information now is, is power. Information, you know, if they're angry about being to... transparent and being outed for not liking people, you know, in emails, they shouldn't bloody write the emails in the first place. <laughs> Don't think that in a digital world that these things are sacrosanct. They're not. Your emails. It's digital information. This is a digital age. Mm. If you don't like it, don't don't live in this age. Go back to the 
invent a time machine, go back. Would you regret? Would you regard that as a weak chin? Your drawing. A weak chin. Yeah. Because it's. Uh, You've heard the phrase a weak chin, haven't it's you? It's subordinate to the rest of the face. Oh, okay. The dominant feature is the centre of the face, yeah. which I've actually produced here. With he the hasn't nose. talked about the T zone yet, folks, or or the or, the, or the, the source of light. Well, I had coffee. I didn't have tea today, so. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, that explains everything. No, it doesn't explain nothing. We'll talk about it in a sec. Do you want to do the T zone? And, uh, I will. I just want to get a handle on this first. Get a handle I'm on not, it. I'm not convinced well, it that already I'm looks like him. a likeness. It already looks like him. Well, thank you, but I'm still not convinced. I'm, uh, oh, you know good. I'm glad I you're love, not convinced. Mm, I love... Um, but we want, we want transparency with this drawing, right? I love... Full uh, transparency. Uh, I love drawing jackets, men's jackets, because they're really um, corporate uh, characteristics. You know, like ties represent the the knight's sword. The whole of the um, system of men's jackets are based on... Um, I just think uh, you like drawing skinny necks. <sighs> okay, so this is what we have here. T-zone, T-zone. We've got like a uh, plectrum, right? And instead of playing guitar with Plong. a plectrum, we've got a plectrum with a tiny tumour, which is this a thing sticking tumor. out. With a baby plectrum. A baby plectrum, okay. That's the basic shape. That's the basic shape, right, that I want to go for. There's a little bit of um, uh, perspective in the fact that the face is, is a three-quarter view, right? We've got a light source that's coming in from above which means that the shadows are it's actually favored a little bit about there i think yeah which means that there's shadows coming into this area mm, of the face the eye sockets, yeah. Yeah. yeah so Under that the chin. yep so that's where we're going to look so whenever you're going to darken something or or put you know shading do it in reference to where the main light source is coming mm. you can always put in bounce lights you know, on the other side, which kind of lighten the the shadow effects and create the penumbra, which is the um, baby plectrum. Mm. The concept of uh, so of the light coming down there. There's a hot spot, okay, and mm. to create this spherical object, the three dimensional quality. There's a reflected light that comes in and lightens the shadow area. All right, so that it's not as stark. So other things that we, we need to talk about are this zone of influence. The, um, the zone of influence. Yeah, that's the cone very, of silence. That's right. It's getting very close to that sentence, isn't it? So what this is, let me draw it on its own here. This is called the... It would be a good costume for caricature man. Captain caricature. <laughs> T-zone. Yes, let's scare little kids at parties. Get a caricature man to blow up balloons and turn them into three-dimensional caricatures. caricatures. Yeah, right. right, so we're focusing on this area. This is the T-zone. This is the, the area where you need to concentrate all of your efforts in trying to get a likeness, right? There's a lot of other relationships other than a likeness. You pour all of your details, you're concentrating on the contours, the little lines, the type of the messages or the... The, the geography of the face, all of these things are honed into one area, which is this shape here, the T-zone, which encompasses the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Um, the relationship between all of these things, whether you, you know, do them bigger or smaller, irrespective, right? It's very, very important to remember that everything has, has a relationship so there's a relationship between the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Yeah, and that could be proportionally. That could be, you know, um, the, the accuracy or the recognition could be tied to the accuracy of, of the proportions of those elements of the features. Mm. It could be tied to the details, like the wrinkles around it. It could be, you know, tied to uh, muscles that form, that push and pull on the face across the skull. Um, there are a lot of different aspects about it, but thinking and concentrating into one area is very important 
for the face. So don't think about once you've created the basic structure of the face, thinking that you know all things are made of simple shapes in order to get some form of uh, um, quick response down on the paper. It's a lot easier to, to do that than to create something that's more formative and more um, detailed straight out of the out of the gate. You know, if you try to simplify straight away, you get a better response quicker. It's all about speed and zeroing in. So caricature is a little bit about dis, um, uh, simplification, which is this, right? Simplifying the shapes. It's also about um, exaggeration. So once you've got these parameters, the goalposts set, then you go into play. Play mode is is using your investigative oh, journalism. play mode. Okay. Yeah, it's to create a lot of the um, the narrative, the story, the fun which zone. is told by all these little details. The, the fun, fun zone. zone. Yeah. Fun zone. Okay. So it's a lot of fun. Hmm. So let's go in and see what we can do, what we can find with uh, these details now that we've uh, established some form of um, of goalpost. It's kind of a tight uh, caricature. Uh, this one is sort of like a, getting, for me, a lot of it into the area of portrait rather than um, distortions, even though he's got a big nose in this uh, picture. I think it's um, it's kind of... Uh, you know what I might do is just establish a, a highlight because the eyes are getting very dark here and I think um, it might benefit from a little bit of uh, help. There's a reflected light in, in the eyes that are coming in from the side. Uh, I'm also going to put that light in there. That light in there. We'll break up this light there because of the lines of the lips. Just here and there, just to, to create a sense of uh, texture. What are you pointing at? Oh, that's really light up there, up the top. Yeah, but you know, I'll I'll big, do that big later. Big one up there. Yeah. I'll do that later. Oh, he's got a bando. Oh. Right, so, so where um, are we that we're going to be? So, um, is he a bit here. of a hero to you? Um, I don't know him. He is in a way because I admire people that have a singular purpose. His purpose is, is very, uh, very much um, uh, a self-driven, uh, uh, like a, almost a dare, like dare me, dare me not to tell you know, well, the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Oh, they're not scared of you. It's what you represent. What's Is that, that from, from a Paul Newman movie? No. Easy Rider. No, I haven't seen Easy Rider. Yeah, oh, good, good. Why is that good? It's um, I'm probably going to say. Well, it made a lot of money. It made a lot of money, but it's... I Peck and par. I think it's... A, he didn't make it. Didn't I? No, God. Who was it? Where do you get your information? Peter Fonda and um, what's oh, his name? Oh, they made it themselves. Yeah, um, what's his name? Um, oh, God, the uh, guy who was with him. Um, <laughs> the director. Uh, that guy. That guy, yeah. They got on, the, they, you know, it was the first road movie so much, they just went out on the road to make a movie. Ah. Mm. So Jack Nicholson was in that? Well, they picked him up. Yeah. And he, he gets killed. Cool. Okay. And he's talking about the hippies. He's talking about these two and he says, um, oh, they're not scared of you. It's what you represent. Anyway. Mm. I was just just driving on what you were talking about, about um, fear and that, you know. Well, information is power. And obviously this guy's got a lot of power because of the... Information. Yeah. And he just doesn't put up, you know, one fact about one person. He, you know, he downloads the whole computer. And like, as I said, the Panama Papers, there were thousands and thousands of people and their financial details Yeah. all went down online, you know. 
Well, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, I mean, putting uh, spies at risk and soldiers at risk by um, publishing Well, that's what they reviews. say. I mean, I don't that, know if that's, that's quite true. Dangerous. I mean, you know, they probably just pull the spies out. I don't know. I mean, what was that? Um, Hopscotch. Remember that film, Hopscotch? Mm. With um, Glenda Jackson and... Um, um, not Lemon, um, Walter Matthau. He, he's, he's a spy and um, they, he get, a new boss comes in and they downgrade him. Mm. So he gets cheesed off with this boss, so he decides to tell the truth. And both sides, the Russians and the Americans, are after him because he's going to tell the truth. Mm. Yeah. And that's what the st story is all about. That was made 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, exactly. But it's a dirty business spying. I mean, it's just, I mean, every country, I mean, we complain about, um, um, you know, China and all these countries spying on us, but we spy on them too. It's a, you know. Yeah, it's a, it's a two way deal. Yeah. Mm. But, but he, he broke the rules. He, he broke the rules. He, he put all this huge information on the internet. He didn't send thousands of letters to people. It's just, you know, millions of people saw this stuff. Well, I think the thing that they're most concerned about was the public seeing it. The yeah, public yeah. are the one person you don't want to see anything. Yeah. Because the public are the, the people that you have to keep always in the dark, like the mushrooms. Yeah. Um, if they're not, then the whole system goes to heck. Right? So, you know, it's like, um, it's our version of uh, Animal Farm. Where the where the bunnies, where the idiots, where the anim, the horse and the the uh, you know the um, the poor animals that are subjugated by the pigs, the great unwashed, mm. Mm. the proles. So, you know, I mean, not to put a fine point on it. It's so besides. Information learning, itself is not communism. Doing this drawing... Knowing the truth is not communism because um, the truth exposes both the communists and the, um, the corrupt um, people in yeah. our system. That's what it's designed for. Transparency. It can't be a bad thing. It has to be a good thing. It has to be. Well, some people can't handle the truth, you know? Yeah. Especially in personal relationships, but uh, you know the. But they're the politicians. The shouldn't truth have will set personal, you. The truth will set you free. Politicians, politicians are people working for us, so they shouldn't have. Um, there shouldn't be private life for them. They're public figures, so anything that they email should be, you know, should be open and and uh, mm. honest. Mm. Otherwise, what's what? For what? What what are you doing this for? Who are you in business for? Yourself? Yeah, Aren't but you the average person, person now doesn't have um, access to people in power. You know, um, the big companies, they have their, their people who go and um, do all their schmoozing and trying to get their influence and all that mm. sort of stuff, but the average person can't just... If you're, if you're cheesed off about a particular thing, you can't get in your car and drive to Canberra and and reach, reach, reach the big guy, you know? Well, you should be able to because they're just representatives. Yeah, I know. But so it's uh, not like the a... word public servants is... <laughs> yeah, but it's is very true, ironic. It? It, but they are... Pro yeah, ironic or not, that it just happens to be the truth. They work for us. So, you know, because of that fact, they, they're answerable to us. Mm. The fact that, um, you know, you've got somebody who has to... Uh, break the law or whatever law he broke to reveal these facts that should be evident. They should be open in any case. Well, it's the, the game, isn't it? Them. I mean, when you're a child, you're taught to tell the truth, and then when you actually go out yeah, into a, the world, you realise if, if you tell the truth, you can get into all sorts of trouble, and up, mm. well, all sorts of people will be upset with you on both sides of the camp, and that's what he's done. He's, mm. he's broken the rules of the game. Mm. And technology helped him to do that. So, okay, so, all right, well, if they, if they have, maybe they should just indict technology. Oh, yeah, lock up technology, yeah. Well, like, like, society's to blame. 
That's, well, that's in, what's that these, old um, thing these, from Monty Python? In these times... Well, you got me, it's a fair cop, but society's to blame. I agree, sir, and we'll be arresting them too. Well, according to um, Margaret Thatcher, there's no such thing as society. Mm. Oh, isn't there? That's what she came out with. That's a terrible thing to say. Yeah, she's quite and a... hardly any people <laughs> actually sort of... Took her up on it. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's... I think she was aware that she she lost her um, her love and feeling, and it's gone, gone, yeah. gone. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I don't think it was. Um, uh, by then, I don't think it was an issue for her. It was like no one's going to love me, so I hate you all. I think you have um, seen too many horror movies. Why? Oh, sometimes the way you talk, you know. About and, and tell me Thatcher. about jackets. You like men's jackets? Yeah, they're representative of a, of a you know bygone era, knights in shining armour. Oh, <laughs> they're like they have breastplates and um, the pels and things that represent you know come from original mm. uh, come from armour. So oh. they're very sort power of power dressing in more ways than one. Oh. Yeah, it can be very. Um, well, you'd miss the 70s. Why? With the shoulders. Big shoulders. That was mainly on women's... Uh, and what about the zoot suits in the 40s? Boy, they are be- you know, yeah. they were huge. Yeah. We never had zoot suits here, but... Something... Yeah. Um, a bygone era of uh, fashion. So I'm actually watching the... Uh, Penny Dreadful at the moment. It's got a lot of that 1940s um, it's, it's, Hispanic culture with the it, zoot suits. It's funny about um, fashion. Um, the, the, um, the king to be, the Duke of Wales, whatever they call him, he started wearing three-piece suits, you know, with the vest. Right. And they become popular. And even miners were going down the mine with, with vests on. I like the ancient Roman uh, take on fashion, you know. Don't worry about fashion, just wear your old bed sheets. The old, the old bed sheets, mm. yeah. Some stinky old bed sheets. They well, have no, no idea about fashion. They're not, not interested in fashion, no. Bed sheets, good enough. Well, fashion's, um, I mean, I've never been interested in fashion, but... It, it's if they had pyjamas then, they would have worn pyjamas to the forum. <laughs> They would have. Why not? Um, I refuse to talk about pyjamas on this particular subject of Julius Assange, all right? Well, so let's get back onto it, all right? So they're trying to get him to wear striped pyjamas on a permanent basis. Uh, they don't have striped pyjamas in um, jail America anymore. They have orange pyjamas. That's right. So you can the see... Guantanamo him, orange. You can see him running down the street at night, you know? Was that why they do it? Oh, of course. It's easy to catch them. Right. If they wanted to catch them, maybe they just wanted an easy shot. An excuse to catch them. Mm. He attacked me. Then why has he got 16 bullets in his back? You know. Who? Oh, that's, that's what generally happens, isn't it? So, um... He I wonder how first. history would. Uh, I wonder how history would um, regard Julian. Well, journalists. Thought, I mean, what about that that uh, guy who was killed by the Tur- uh, the um, the Turkish guy that was killed by the um, what's his name? Shoggy. Uh, you know, like um, Shoggy. The you know he was in a he was in a, the embassy and they, they oh the Saudi Arabian yeah thing. and they chopped him up. Mm. You know, I mean. Journalists are in trouble, you know, they're, they're, they need to be shut down in this, in this world of um, power, you know. They're, well, you know what, it's... I a, mean, he's not going around the world, this guy. He, he's not going to war zones and all that sort of stuff, but no. um, he's doing more damage by putting his stuff out than, um, than someone who's on the, on the scene of the, of the war and then Again, writes you know, how it is. Again, they're not transparent, which they're supposed to be, then there wouldn't be a, a problem. The problem here is not 
that he's outing all of these people. The problem is that they shouldn't be, um, they should already be out. These people, these politicians are servants. They have no right to have private emails saying, you know, things that they don't want the public to hear. They don't have the right to do that. They don't have lives the way we do. We have private lives. These people are elected. They forego their private life for their ambitions. So, you know, they shouldn't be upset by him um, talking about them or saying what their emails are. If they're embarrassed, don't write the bloody emails. And don't be stupid and it's think that like, it's private. It's a bit like, I mean, It's not you a know, water cooler. It's a bit like, you know, Pandora's box has been opened, you know. It's a bit late to what you're saying. Well, I don't think that they're stupid enough to do it anymore, are they? I well, mean, they surely. continually do it. I mean, people are... People, <laughs> and they're still being you've got found human out. Nature. You've got human nature here, mate, you know. Mm. Oh, you're definitely going to do I, it. I guess it's kind of, uh, you know, it's sort of... Um, I don't know. It's a valuable uh, lesson to be uh, exposed like this to the world, you know, to have all of your your um, double dealings and uh, crooked thoughts and, uh, you know, um, duplicitous actions and things sort of outed to the world as a politician. It's just that, you know, the thing with politicians is that it used to be back in maybe Abraham Lincoln's time, it used to be a, 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 um, a good uh, profession, an honourable profession. People have a calling to, to serve the public, you know. Now, it's just they're serving themselves. And I think that's like, the, it's become more of a, um, a problem than a character flaw. Like caric caricaturists pick up things like character flaws in cartoons and, and, uh, and caricatures of, of their politicians. These are character flaws, you know. Oh, he's really, a, he's really this, you know. He's a, he's a naughty boy or something. It's what, becoming to be quite an what, issue. What are his character flaws? His character flaws, mm. I think, are... Um, there seems to be a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of internal um, thoughts here. He's actually coming out to be quite... Um, very strong personality, very strong uh, singular personality with these lines. There's a lot of conflict going on in his head. But there's not so many lines around his mouth. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of thought happening up here, but not a lot of speaking, which goes in opposition to what the whole idea of WikiLeaks is about, which is blowing... The cover on corruption. You, you call it character flaws. Flaws. Well, characteristics. Oh, okay. Hmm. I think politicians have character flaws. You know, and people say, oh, well, they're only human. We didn't elect humans, all right? <laughs> We've elected people that are supposed to serve us and do the right thing. You know, if we want mm. humans, we'll go and elect some somebody else. We don't want humans, yes. We don't want that, humans. That's right. <laughs> you don't want politicians to be human. Mm. They have to be perfect because they represent us. They're our representatives. And if you want... You, you know, are serious. I am. You're serious. Now... Um, what, what, what do you no, really think to... that politicians have a right to be corrupt? No, but I mean, um, or to be human. They're in a position. They're in a position, and anybody in that same position can like. It's like fame. Most most people don't survive fame. They it destroys them. Yeah, but it, that's it just an excuse. Lives. But that's an excuse because we've have elected be, them. But you have to be really, really, really strong to go into it. I mean, there's no test. That's another thing. Who was it? Um, was it Plato or Archimedes or somebody actually? Uh, wrote down what you need to be, uh, what what characters you need, characteristics you need to go into politics. I think it was, oh, I can't remember, but um, he wrote a piece about what 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 you need, you know. And um, 
a friend of mine who who died a couple of years ago, Noel, um, Noel told me that uh, um, um, there should be a school to train politicians on um, how to fool people. No, on, on how well how to communicate for start. Mm. Um, but the, you see, the thing is, they whenever a politician is is being um, interviewed, straight away. You, you, you can see he's got the brakes on because he doesn't want to let certain information out. Well, it's, yeah, because so, there's that joke, you know, how do you know when a politician's lying? Their mouth's moving. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, we laugh at that, but at, at the same time we're crying because, you know, these are somebody that represents you and supposed to s serve the country, you know, instead they're not. They're crooks. That's what you're inferring with, with statements like that. No, well, he, he said so, that um, politicians should be trained. Yeah. You know, they should be trained. Right. Anyway, look, let's get him back to the drawing. Um, now, you're drawing Julian Assange because you think you should do him, right? Yeah, and he's a public figure. Right, yep. And we want to expose him in many ways. You want to get his story out, right? Yeah. You don't want people to forget him. So you're doing a drawing on, live on Facebook... He's a very complex... And hopefully hopefully, you want people to look at it and then actually do something about it, maybe. What are and they going to do about it? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. The, the role of a caricaturist. I mean, the are you role. making any difference to his, um, his well, freedom? I wasn't elected no, 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 but the role do, of do caricature. You, do you think, as, a, as a, a, an artist, do you think you've got any hope in, in hell by, by influencing the situation he's in by doing this drawing and putting on, on online? Well, no, no more than anybody ever mentioning him. All I'm doing is mentioning him. Yep. But I'm talking about, you know, the drawing process. So a little bit about the drawing process. You know, when you draw you're somebody... About his, you're talking about his character, because I don't talk about character in the news. I can't but, help but do that when I draw somebody. Yes, yes, yes. It's part of the whole thing that I do, the, the process of here. You know, you're drawing things and you think, why is that wrinkle there? What's that wrinkle saying to me? You know, the, these are things that that tell stories about. Um, I'm I'm talking. I'm I'm who the subject I'm, is. I'm getting at the fact that do you think um, doing a caricature of someone like this mm. in the present situation on the um, platform that you're using is a, a political? Um, it, 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 it's a political statement. Is it? I don't know. Maybe. I don't look. I don't. Do you look, want I don't it even, to be? Do you want it to be? I no, mean, I, I don't have any particular um, impressions of uh, Julian Assange, whether you know he's this or whether he's that. I'm just focusing on this story of his face, and um, and because he's in the public eye, he's he's you know as he's an Australian, and. Um, He's got an interesting story, I think. Oh, okay. And that's what I'm trying to focus on yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm not telling you that you should, you know, set Julian Assange. I'm not using this as a platform to air my views personally one way or the other. I don't have any views really on him other than, you know, maybe, maybe he's, uh, you know, a, a victim in this. Maybe he is, you know. I think it's something worth considering. A sacrificial perhaps. lamb. You well, think? I, I, oh, I don't know whether sacrificial lamb is well, a good word. I don't think goat. we're in that. Is he a scapegoat? Of, is he a scapegoat? I don't think we're in that sort of bad, you know, situation, politically or socially. But I think you know, there's certain, there's certainly a lot uh, about him that uh, uh, we should be alarmed about, which is. Um, the fact that, you know, he could be a, a victim for speaking out. Mm. And if that's true, what does that s say about us as, as a society? Why are our politicians so intent on, you know, suppressing someone like this for speaking out uh, and embarrassing them? And, you know, and the fact... Well, I mean, they would say they can't get their job done if... if if some news but, gets out and, well, then, then, there's a, and, and then they get 10,000 calls, phone well, calls... Well, here's a good idea. Quit if you can't get your job done. 
you know, if, if your whole job is is only dependent on on suppression of information, what kind of a job is that? Mm -hmm. Tell me how that serves the public good. Doesn't I can't see it serving the public good. Um, I still think this look. This is the age of information. This is the age of of, of transparency. So um, they don't like transparency. Who also doesn't like transparency? Criminals. They hate transparency. Mm. They really, really hate transparency because they don't want to get caught. You know, politicians hate transparency, crooked ones, because they don't want to get caught. They don't want to get caught with their hand in the till. Someday you're going to get caught. Someday you're going to get caught. So I think, um, you know, the fact that uh, somebody is, you know, being chased um, for outing all of these, um, you know, disreputable behaviour by politicians... Um, kind of speaks to the the fact that you've got a lot of issues with transparency and um, other, otherwise it just wouldn't be an issue. It wouldn't have happened. It would not have happened if you behave like a proper human being rather than some secretive dickhead, you know, writing bad emails about people and things, secrets, and call them secrets. That's the other thing, too. You know, keeping secrets from the public is wrong. It's just you're a public figure. The hell? Why have you got secrets? We don't pay you for secrets. We pay you to get a job done. So, You've used you know, now up that I've white, done... You're using, done up a, um, you're using up a lot of white there. What's that mean? Oh, it's telling I'm, me don't paint the background. No, no, no. Right. I'm just thinking how, um, compared to what you normally do, you're using up a lot of white. That's all. Mm. Yeah. Well, he's got very white hair and uh, Well, he skin. doesn't spend too much time under the sun lamp, does he? <laughs> mm. Well, it's pretty sunny in Ecuador. Because he's... Be yeah, not, not in a room in London. Mm. Um, because he has this uh, pale... Complexion, like a, like a. Um, what was that movie with the the kids with the white hair? Um, it was based on a book called The Bidwitched Cuckoos. George Sanders was in it. Um, oh, the Dam. Village of the Dam. Yeah, yeah, Village of the Dam. They had green hair. Oh no, that's another film. The girl with the green hair. Yeah, that's it, right. It's based on. That's a, a very good film. I saw it last year. It's very short, but it's very good. It is, Barbara Shelley. I'm showing my um, love of Hammer films. So yeah, um, Sir Julian has. Um, Sir Julian, okay. You th he can't be. Will he be Sir Julian? <laughs> time will tell. Be well, a long you've time already knighted though. Shakespeare. I have. The other day. Well, Sir, Sir Will. Sir William. Um, Do you think that um, if Shakespeare was alive today, he'd write a, a play about um, Julian Assange? I think they'll prob he'd probably do a musical. Mm, God. He'd be doing musicals. I think there's someone's doing one now. On the... Really? Yeah. Well, there's, there's Dracula, the musical, so... Oh, yeah. The book you didn't like. No, I hate the. I no, I don't dislike it. I hate yeah. Frankenstein. I think that's rubbish. Um, lovely story, but I what? think the book Frankenstein's rubbish. I take it you don't read many female authors. I do. I.e. Uh, I can't think of one for the moment. That's right. That's got you there. Got you there. Um. No, I'm sure I would, but... The, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, come on, spit it out. I don't do a lot of reading. No, he doesn't. You know? He doesn't. A lot he of makes the... me do all the reading. Yeah. I, I... I, I want to come at it fresh, Jim. I want to see it for I the can, first time. I, I can read, read, and I can't read, write. He loves saying that. Actually, 
In a hundred years' time, I don't like doing that research. Be a, th- I think it's in, silly. In a hundred years' time, that won't be a Popeye um, quote. That'll be a, a Franz Cantor quote. Yeah, or a Franz Cantor misquote. Yeah, there won't there's, be there's a lot of them around. There's years. a lot of them around. Yeah. All I'm saying is give peace a chance. That's it. <laughs> what about beans and cabbages? Mm. Give them a chance too. Instead of peas. Yeah. Very interesting face, this, uh, this fellow. Very interesting face. You can see the consternation in his eyes. Well, you've like given him. Um, you've you've given him actually like compared to what the look is on the on the source material. You've actually transcended that look. Well, he's, he's just very interesting. He's just a very interesting man. You can see mm. all of the mm. the pattern in the in the um, complex wrinkles in his head. So there's a lot of um, conflicts going on. But again. You know, the lack of wrinkles around his mouth means that he doesn't talk a lot. So like he thinks m- a lot I like and his- worries a lot. Yeah. At the moment he's worrying a lot. But I think, um, you know, there's a, there's a certain um, arrogance in his... Uh, yeah, arrogance. Yeah. There's a certain... Well, I like the, the, the Marilyn hair, hair you've I'll given just explain yeah. a little bit about this. In order, for, in order for people to excel at something, they've got to be single-minded. And that's what, what he is. So he's very good at what he does. He knows that. Mm. And I think um, it reflects it in his face. It shows that in his face. So what I'm trying to do, what I've been trying to do here is to create, there's the thumbnail, right? A tonal version using the brown, the uh, gray paper and using simple tools like a, you know, brown pencil, colour pencil, a black colour pencil and a white colour pencil and creating a tonal drawing, a tonal drawing. That's what I'm creating. A little bit of help from brush pens and white uh, markers and stuff, but, you know, basically it's a tonal exercise. With a little help from his pens. Yeah. I think that might be it. Mm. So, I kind of sprung this on you without any uh, foreknowledge of, uh, kind of must messed up the ear over there, doesn't matter, the um, uh, concept of, or the, the character, the choice of character. I just couldn't resist. I had this sort of epiphany when I was um, thinking about today's subject. Mm. I hope you guys... Uh, enjoyed it it's a very uh it's a challenging uh subject because there is a lot of um well you've inspired me because i think um tom rain and me are going to have to put out a um in our magazine um uh cartoon muse we'll have to do a caricature session with a whole bunch of people and how they draw well that's good the thing about i want you the reason why i'm doing this is because you know, you should think about him, just research him, you know, find out a little bit more about him. It's not all what you hear in the in the media, I'm sure. There's a bigger story to be told here. And, uh, you know, and if we can sort of think about that, that's a, that's a, probably a good thing. So, Yes, there are, there are 20 million um, stories in the Naked City, and this uh, has been one of them. Yeah. This has been one of them. Yeah. All right, this is me, uh, Franz Cantor. This is Julian Assange. This is the before, and this is the after. You be the judge. Um, And and I'm here with... Jim Bridges, and I'll see you after. Yes, so what do I usually say? Catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye.